it is asking you to show the problem in a decision tree form and we have to take the decision first of all the company is having two alternative the first alternative do not expand and second alternative expand so these two main alternatives we are showing in this way this is a decision tree which is beginning from left side so two branches are being uh, taken out from this decision tree one do not expand the plant and one expand the plant if we do not expand the plant the cash outlay is nil it is uh, given in the problem that cash outlay will be required only when we expand the plant when we don't expand there is no cash outlay so cash outlay will be nil so three consequences are given when we do not plant do not expand when we do not expand three pv cfats are given the three pv, PV cfats are 2 lakh 3 lakh 50 thousand five so these three branches are coming out from this alternative do not expand three branches pv cfat and for each branch we are given the probability 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 these are the probabilities and these are the pv cfat now we multiply 0 0.2 into 2 lakh you will get 40000 this is expected CFAT. CFAT into probability will get expected CFAT. So uh, 0.3 into 3 lakh 50,000, 1 lakh 5,0.5 into 5 lakh 2 lakh 50,000. Now add up these three 3 lakh 95,000. This 3 lakh 95,000 is the present value of CFAT. Present value of CFAT. From this we subtract PV of cash outflow. PV of cash outflow is nil. So will get NPV 3,95,000. So this 3,95,000 is the net present value in the alternative do not expand. Similarly, the second alternative is expand the plant. Expand the plant means there is a cash outlay of 4 lakh rupees given in the problem. If we expand the plant, cash outlay 4 lakh. Again, three consequences are there. The PV CFAT is 4 lakh 50,000, 7 lakh or 5 lakh. The probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0.5. Again, we multiply 0 0.2 into 4 lakh 50,000, 90,000. And 0 0.3 into 7 lakh is 2 lakh 10,000. 0.5 into 5 lakh is 2 lakh 50,000. The total PV of cash inflow is 5 lakh 50,000. Minus cash outflow. Outflow is 4 lakh. So subtract 4 lakh, we'll get NPV 1 lakh 50,000. Now, on the basis of this decision tree, we have to give the suggestion, conclusion. It is suggested not to expand it is suggested not to expand the plant since in this alternative the NPV is more that is rupees 3 lakh 95,000. If expand karenge, to NPV khali 1 lakh 50,000. If you expand nahi karenge, to phir, uh, NPV 3 lakh 95,000. So more NPV we are having in first branch. Do not expand. So we suggest the company not to expand the plant and to continue with the old existing plant. In that case our NPV is more. Problem number 36. A project involves initial investment of rupees 25,000. Life of the project is 4 years and the cash inflows are 12,000 per annum for 4 years. Every year constant 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 4 years. Cost of capital is 12%. The expected rate at which cash inflows will be reinvested at the end of the year. What are the techniques? One of the technique of uh, capital budgeting proposal is terminal value method. So far we have done the problems on NPV method, PI method, ARR method, oh, sorry, NPV method, PI method and uh, IRR method. These three are the discounted cash flow technique, modern techniques. In modern techniques, NPV, PI and IRR. Apart from that, one more method is there called terminal value method. In terminal value method, we assume that every year cash inflows which we get will be reinvested in some other project during the whole life of the project. Ye pure project ki life mein, jaisa jaisa cash inflow aate gaya, 
उसको यूज नहीं करेंगे वो कैश इन फ्लो को री इन्वेस्ट करेंगे कोई दूसरे प्रोजेक्ट कोई दूसरे प्रोजेक्ट एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट ईयर ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड रुपीज मिले हैं तो वी आर नॉट कंज्यूमिंग ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड रुपीज वी आर नॉट स्पेंडिंग ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड वी आर री इन्वेस्टिंग ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड इन समर सिक्योरिटी समर प्रोजेक्ट नेक्स्ट ईयर सेकेंड ईयर अगेन वी रिसीव ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड अगेन वी इन्वेस्ट थर्ड ईयर ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड अगेन वी इन्वेस्ट फोर्थ ईयर एंड वी विल नॉट इन्वेस्ट बिकॉज लाइफ ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इज ओवर तो टिल थ्री ईयर फर्स्ट ईयर एंड सेकेंड ईयर एंड थर्ड ईयर एंड दिस थ्री ईयर वी आर मेकिंग द इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड अर्निंग कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट ईयर वन टू थ्री फोर परसेंटेज ऑफ अर्निंग फाइव परसेंट फाइव परसेंट टेन परसेंट टेन परसेंट यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू एनालाइज द फीजिबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट यूजिंग टर्मिनल वैल्यू मेथड ओनली वन प्रॉब्लम आई एम टेकिंग दिस वन बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट वेरी पॉपुलर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओनली वन प्रॉब्लम इज एफ फॉर टर्मिनल वैल्यू मेथड टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड in this method every year the cash inflows will be reinvested in some other security and earn the interest at compounded so we find out the present value the present value of compounded reinvested cash inflows compounded reinvested cash inflows and we present value we calculate that present value of compounded reinvested cash inflow will be compared with the pv of cash outflow If you get positive difference, the project should be accepted. If you get negative difference, the project should be rejected. So simply terminal value method, we find out the present value of compounded reinvested cash inflows. From that present value, we subtract the PV of cash outflow. In our problem, PV of cash outflow is twenty five thousand, right? Come on, this is problem number twenty six. Thirty-six. Evaluation of project by terminal value method. calculation of compounded value calculation of compounded value of cash in year cash inflows rate of interest the compounded value there is a rate of interest given in the problem then we have years of investment next one is compounding factor last one is compounded value so how many years four years 1234 compounded value of cash inflows so every year we are getting 12000 rate of interest is given in the problem 5% 5% 10% 10% 10% increment years of increment shows how many years we are making the investment compounded this 12000 we are making the investment at the end of first year at the end of first year means second year third year fourth year 
तो एट द एंड ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर वी आर री इन्वेस्टिंग ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड एट द एंड ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर तो रिमेनिंग ईयर विल बी थ्री ईयर दिस ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड वी आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन सेकेंड ईयर एंड सेकेंड ईयर एंड का मतलब थर्ड ईयर और फोर्थ ईयर ओनली टू ईयर वी आर री इन्वेस्टिंग दिस थर्ड ईयर एंड वी आर इन्वेस्टिंग ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड रुपीज ओनली वन ईयर फोर्थ ईयर फोर्थ ईयर एंड वी आर गेटिंग ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड रुपीज कैश इन फ्लो वी आर नॉट इन्वेस्टिंग बिकॉज द लाइफ ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इज फोर ईयर ओनली जब फोर्थ ईयर के एंड में पैसा आएगा तो उसको री इन्वेस्ट नहीं करेंगे पहले साल री इन्वेस्ट करेंगे दूसरे साल तीसरे साल तो फर्स्ट ईयर के लिए थ्री ईयर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग टू ईयर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग वन ईयर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग नो कंपाउंडिंग फैक्टर द कंपाउंडिंग फैक्टर इज वन प्लस आर टू दावर ऑफ एन वन प्लस आर टू दावर ऑफ एन वन प्लस वॉट इज द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव फाइव परसेंट टू दावर ऑफ एन हाउ मेनी इयर्स थ्री इयर्स तो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट वन पॉइंट वन फाइव एट वन पॉइंट वन फाइव एट इज द कंपाउंडिंग रेट सिमिलरली सेकेंड सेकेंड ईयर सेम वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव टू द पॉवर ऑफ टू यू आर गेटिंग वन पॉइंट वन जीरो टू हियर टेन परसेंट वन प्लस पॉइंट वन जीरो टू द पॉवर ऑफ वन सो वन पॉइंट वन जीरो लास्टली लास्टली वी डोंट हैव डायरेक्टली वील टेक वन और Now we multiply. Multiply this cash inflow with this compounding factor. We'll get thirteen thousand eight ninety six and thirteen thousand two twenty four. Here it is thirteen thousand two hundred. Lastly twelve thousand. The total value is fifty two thousand three twenty. This is the compounded value of cash inflows. Compounded value of cash inflows reinvested. Now we want the present value. Present value of this compounded cash inflow is equal to. Fifty two thousand three twenty into PV factor at the rate of what is the required rate of return given in the problem? Cost of capital twelve percent for how many years? Four years. Fifty two thousand three twenty into twelve percent for four years. One divided by one point one two is equal to one year two three four six. Six three six point six three six into fifty two thousand three twenty. It comes to thirty three thousand two seventy six. Fifty two thousand three twenty into point six three six. You are getting thirty three thousand two seventy. This is the present value. Present value of compounded cash inflow thirty three thousand two seventy six less PV of cash outflow twenty five thousand net present value five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirty eight eight thousand two seventy six is the NPV. Eight thousand two seventy six. That's it. Now we have to give the suggestion. Since the NPV is positive, it is suggested to invest the to invest in this project according to terminal value method. That's it. So this marks the end of 
unit number two. In this unit, we have discussed about the investment decisions. Investment decisions means before making the investment in capital project, capital investment, the business has to evaluate what will be the consequence. Is it prudent or not to invest? So we have different techniques available for taking the decision. And these decisions are called capital budgeting decisions. And capital budgeting decisions are very difficult to take because it will affect a long duration. Because it cannot be reversed back. Because it involves huge amount. So many complications are there. That's why it's not an easy task to take this capital budgeting decision. So we have different techniques. Traditional technique, modern technique. Traditional technique we have PBP method and ARR method. But these techniques will suffer from number of limitations. Drawbacks. The drawback is time value of money is not considered then secondly the totality of benefit is not considered thirdly it is based on accounting profit rather than cash flow on account of all these drawbacks modern methods will be used the modern methods are the NPV net present value method PI profitability index method IRR internal rate of return method and lastly terminal value method so we have done many problems on NPV IR. Sab mein zyada use hone wale method NPV IR hai. And but sometimes occasionally in examination they will ask you about PPP as well as AR. But more important is NPV and IR. NPV easily we can find out. But IR it requires some practice. Some practice. If you make some practice, if you do the problem independently, then de definitely you can you will get the command easily. You can do it. I, I have shown you the procedure. You have to refer the annuity table. Even if you don't have the annuity table, forget it. But trial and error method you can evaluate. For example, agar NPV positive aaya, kya rate se NPV positive aaya? Ten percent rate se positive aaya. 10% rate of interest के साथ NPV positive आ गया अब IRR calculate करना है तो mind में ये रख लो कि IRR का rate 10% से बढ़ा होगा 10% से बढ़ा ही रहा तो IRR का rate 10% से बढ़ा होगा तो हम suppose करेंगे 15% चलो 15% से PV of cash inflow मालूम कर लिए मालूम करने के बाद देखना ये कि 15% से जो calculate करें ये more than cash outflow है या less than cash outflow है ये compare करके फिर to increase the PV of cash inflow, we decrease the rate. To decrease the PV of cash inflow, we increase the rate. As I increase or decrease, करके दो rate मालूम कर लीजिए, जिससे एक PV of cash inflow कम है ना, और एक PV of cash inflow बड़ा है। फिर interpolation apply करके, we can be able to find out the IRR. NPV and PI are very much similar. NPV you have to subtract PV of cash inflow minus PV of cash outflow. But in PI method, you have to divide PV of cash inflow divided by PV of cash outflow. This is the difference between NPV and PI. Right? Okay, so hope this uh, video on unit number two investment management will be sufficient for you to get a good grasp on this topic called investment decisions. In the next video, we will discuss about financing decisions. Financing decisions unit number three will discuss in the next week.